these are the weirdest NHL moments of all time. And starting with number 20, we showcase two alpha males in a strange pregame standoff. Not in pregame, who's going to leave the ice last? Brad Marchand refuses to, so does Mika Zibanejad. This has been going on for more than four minutes. Both players refuse to budge. So what's the solution? Ah, I see. An old fashioned game of rocks, paper, scissors. Now, Sabanya won, but Marshawn, you shouldn't have thrown scissors, especially at a pivotal moment like that. And let this be known, in a general rule of hockey, we never throw scissors. And that rule applies for stink bombs too. Which at number 19, a weird vibe hit the rink as some fans were seen trying to mask their faces from the smoke. Oh, it was a smoke bomb. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay, I saw something hurled out of the uh, seats. Man, it sure would be difficult to play hockey in a cloud of smoke. It'd also be hard to play without a stick. In our 18th weirdest moment, Jeff Skinner of the Buffalo Sabres demonstrated just how weird things get when you try to play without lumber in your hand. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the uh, awkward demonstration there, Jeff. Gets the puck out, gets the stick knocked out of his hands. He's got nothing. He's using his feet. He's waiting for a little... It reminds us of a goalie that once tried to play offense. Check this out at number 17. Now, Patrick Waugh attempts to dangle up the middle, but it seems he wandered a little too far. You know, it was weird seeing a goalie out past the blue line, much less the red line. The penalty now, he carried the puck over center ice. You can't do that as a goalie. In fact, I don't even know what he was trying to do. Goalies, man, they make some of the most peculiar plays. You're a frustrated goalie. You never get to leave your crease. Hey, the game doesn't mean anything. I'm going to show that I have a little skill. And Patrick has a little bit of the show off in him. Like play number 16, journeyman Mike Smith attempts to poke check the puck. And amazingly, it pops up into the air and lands in his pants. A puck isn't the worst thing that could fall in your pants. But what's weird is nobody noticed it. Smith slid back into position and unknowingly scored on himself. Whoops! It's never a good feeling to score on yourself. Review of the play, the puck did cross the line. We have a good goal. <laughs> but tattooing yourself is a different story. The 15th weirdest moment is brought to you by a Phillies fan. When Robert Dunphy revealed his new gritty ink, man, <laughs> the scenes were weird. The two characters started jumping around rambunctiously. Did that happen to register on the Richter scale? Like most mascots, Gritty is a fun-loving and happy-go-lucky. The whole thing outlined at once, and we went from there. He put the fanatic where it was, and I liked it, so we ran with it. However, some mascots take things a little too far. A good example is here at number 14. The Calgary Flames mascot, Harvey the Hound, was roaming around looking for trouble and got what he was looking for. Now, normally the cat gets your tongue, but not in this instance. It was Oilers coach Craig McTavish with the crafty prank to steal the hound's tongue. You take it? Yeah. It's always exciting when players and coaches get involved with the antics around the arena. And we see that in number 13. The cameraman aimed his instrument at the Red Wings bench during a kiss cam moment. But luckily, Steve Eiserman swooped in and saved the two players from a weird moment. You know, it might be weird to ask two heterosexual men to kiss on camera, but maybe not as weird as a sudden rat infestation. And during moment number 12, that's exactly what happened down in sunny Florida. This is the Avalanche's first look at the rats. The Panthers fans took it upon themselves to cover the ice with uh, toy rodents. Uh, that's pretty creepy. Hey man, at least those were fake rats and not the real thing. The strangest thing they said they've picked up in these playoffs has been a box of decon, which is a rat killer. <laughs> And to follow up with our rat problem, we get an honorable mention that highlights a tradition started in Detroit of throwing an actual octopus on the ice? Am I reading that right? Now those right there, those are some nice tentacles. But who would have thought to bring a catfish to a game? I hope they located the weirdo that launched that aquatic animal. A huge, smelly, and heavy catfish has since become a tradition for the Nashville Predators to help bring them luck.
Now, a tradition nobody wants to keep is having a black cat run across their ice surface. In scene number 10, the cute, cuddly little feline can be seen scurrying off the bench all the way down to the Zamboni doors. A little spooky, a little bit creepy if you ask me. Good to see. He, is, I mean, he is wired. You know That's what? three Red Bulls. Torch, don't turn around, Torch! Have a look at moment number nine. This strange fan somehow sneaks a funny dummy in right behind the bench. The joke's on the spectator as the doll doesn't seem to phase the veteran coach. Now, the ventriloquist didn't seem to disrupt the game, unlike Sharky. The eighth weirdest moment occurred when the San Jose Sharks mascot was dropping down onto the ice prior to the opening of Face Off. I'll tell you, that's going to take quite a bit of uh, arm strength from Sharky, although he looks to be not using his arms right now, so that harness basically holding him. But somehow, he got stuck during his descent. Sharky was not the only one who suffered a difficult descent. During moment number seven, Ty Domi had an altercation with a fan. Things got a little weird when the fan tried to jump the glass and, and went head over tea kettle. Tucker being helped off. Another squirt, and here comes a fan from the second row. Chris Falcone. Down he goes, glass break. Uh, I, I don't think it's a good idea to fight a hockey player. I mean, they literally have a lethal weapon in their hand at all times. Yet, check out weird moment number six. Now, this clown in Quebec got a flurry of fists from Rob Ray. Now, this should be noted. People should never make their way onto the ice unless they're an emergency player or a ref. Like moment number five, when the Carolina Hurricanes lost their goalies, they called upon 42-year-old emergency goalkeeper. From... And I think Clifford will get an extra because his helmet came off. He didn't grab it, didn't go to the bench. So to make his NHL debut. It's weird to use an emergency goalkeeper, much less have him be a 42 year old making his first ever appearance. Ayers won the game for his team, unlike Patrick Steffen, who created one of the weirdest sequences to ever finish a hockey game. Play number four is so wild, Hollywood couldn't even write a crazier finish. Now sit back and watch this wacky play unfold. Because he's just going to try and slide it into the goal gently. How about shoot the darn thing? You got a $300 stick in your hand. But when Stefan loses the puck, I cannot believe what I just witnessed with my own two eyes. Now, I gotta say, it will probably take a lot to top that. But having a live bat fly around the building is about as weird as it gets. And a bat started dive bombing the players. Well, one of the guys smacked it and killed it. And then the flyer's Rick McLeish picked it up and dumped it. During play number three, the fans are in a frenzy as the flying mammal searches for an escape route before being chopped down by a player. I don't know how Dracula got into the arena, but it's probably easier than sneaking a chicken past security. Just like the rat and octopus before it, in play number two, a live chicken was thrown onto the ice. Play continued for some time before the ref finally blew the whistle. The chicken wet the ice before corralling into a bucket. A blue napkin on it, so now they don't know what to do with it. Chicken sitting out on the ice. I've never seen this before in my life. Now you're probably wondering, how could we possibly top a chicken on ice? Well. During play number one, the entire Bruins hockey team goes into the stands and starts fighting the crowd. Esposito's point of view, he did not get it as high as he would like to have. But I'll tell you, well, we've got a little thing going on here between Beaton and Secord. The weirdest point being when Mike Milbury took off a guy's shoe and started beating him with it. As O'Reilly is out into the stands, and this is going to be something. O'Reilly's into the stands fighting with a... They're all into the stands. McNabb's going up to grab somebody. If you're liking this style of video, make sure to subscribe. We'll be covering every hockey moment just like this.